Hello everyone, this is G-Wiz and today I have a special video for you. I'm going to be cooking. Hello everyone, this is G-Wiz and today I'm going to be cooking carrot brownies. If you saw my last video on measuring carrots, I took two pounds of carrots and I juiced it down to see exactly how much juice I would produce and also how much carrot pulp I produce. What you're looking at here is three cups of carrot pulp. Today, I'm going to be producing something besides carrot cake. I'm going to be producing something that is uncommonly produced. Uh, I am going to be producing carrot brownies, or carrot squares, you could also call it. I think carrot squares make uh, a little bit more sense to call it, since carrots are not brown. It's just going to come off of the same recipes as brownies, aside from the chocolate, of course, don't add chocolate to this. If anything, add vanilla, but uh, let's get into it. So for the carrot squares, you're gonna need three cups of carrot pulp, half a cup vegetable oil. I get it. I also have special oil that I've made use whatever oil you like. Use about one cup of flour. For this recipe I'm going to be using tapioca flour. This is a little bit of an experiment for both of us. This is going to be a gluten-free um, option for those who are juicing carrots and uh, maybe you're vegetarian. You just don't like gluten. Pretty common. So I'm going to be using tapioca flour for this. Now, the next thing you need besides one cup of flour, perhaps one and a half cups, it depends on um, how thick you want the brownies. I like my brownies nice and thick. Um, so one cup of flour is fine. The next thing you want besides three cups of carrots, one cup of flour, is about a cup or half a cup of sugar and half a cup of brown sugar. I have light brown sugar here just because it was on sale. And you're going to want to also have three eggs. Make sure to put the oil in uh, at the end so that it blends better. And then of course I have my extras which are going to be walnuts and I'm going to be using dried cranberries because that's what I had left. They look like they're good still. Let's begin. Okay, so the carrots are already in the bowl. The first thing I'm going to do is start measuring out sugar. Make sure to also preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit now that we have our ingredients set out. And let's begin mixing. Okay, so for the mixing part, I'm going to start, I think, with the brown sugar. Because I like the taste of brown sugar a little bit more than granulated sugar. Now, for this recipe, we only need a cup of sugar, so try not to overdo it on the sugar, but when it comes to sweet things, it can be a little tempting in order to put a little bit too much. So, putting in maybe a little over a cup, just because it doesn't need to be exact but I'm putting about a cup of sugar. Okay. And there. You can see how much sugar I put in there. It is slightly over one cup. About three quarter cups of brown and quarter cup of regular white granulated sugar. Into the carrots. So, Next, okay, the sugar is done. A little more important things to put in. 
it's from the flour. So for this one, I'm using the tapioca flour. Food is free. It smells okay. About one cup. For this, you can actually put in a little bit more than one cup if you wanted to. Put in just a little bit over a cup. About a cup and a quarter, I think, is a good amount to put in. So. As you can see, that is over a cup. I'm going to have to take out some of that. It's a little too much. It's a cup and a half. And I've seen recipes where this is fine. You can use a cup and a half of flour. But if I use this much flour, it might end up tasting a little dry. Yeah. Now I have a little bit more eggs to put in this. So maybe that would actually be okay. Let's just go with a cup and a half. Just so I don't make too much of a mess. But I reduced it anyway to what I got here. A cup and a quarter. We're going to go with a cup and a quarter for this recipe. Alright, cup and a quarter of flour. That looks pretty good, would you say? And typical recipes would call for two eggs. I'm going to be putting in three eggs. And about a half a cup of oil. So, what I'm going to do is the oil first. There we go. Put in about two thirds a cup of oil, actually, but that's okay. I actually think it's going to turn out pretty good if I do this. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, so what do we got? We got a cup and a quarter of flour, tapioca flour in this case. We have two thirds a cup of oil. We have a cup and a quarter of sugar, three cups of carrots, and um, honestly, I could have also replaced some of that oil with some carrot juice, but I'm not doing that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is throw in the, uh, well actually no, do the cranberries last. Do the eggs now. Yeah, this is the last ingredient, I suppose. Here. Ugh. One. Now, some people would suggest just two eggs. I think that that's not enough. I like my brownies to be really fuddy. And I'm also going to be putting this into a 9 by 13 baking dish so I think that will make up for some things and now my method is to stab it in and then to shift the bottom to the top and then rotate I could also use my electric mixer but for delicate powders. This could make a giant mess. It's easier to just do it the old-fashioned way and to stir with a spoon. I'll see what it ends up looking like. Some people would also suggest putting in about a half teaspoon of baking powder, that's an option. You could do that. Again, I don't think it's necessary for brownies. Perhaps for a cake, that would be more necessary because you want the 
flour to rise, but since I'm making this out of tapioca flour anyway, totally unnecessary. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. Remember, I put in a little bit extra flour to make up for the increase in oil. Which means it's going to be a little bit sweet for some. That's okay, that's what I want. I want this to taste sweet because that's just how I like my brownies. Let's take a look at this consistency over here so that you all can tell me what you think. That looks pretty good. Needs to be stirred a little bit more. I think that was just, you know, the minimum amount of mixing required for this to turn out decent in the oven. Now we're putting three eggs, which is basically the amount of eggs you would put into a fudgy browning recipe. No water or anything added. No carrot juice added. I think with consistency like this, look at that. That's a little runny. You think, oh, maybe a little bit more flour, huh? I think maybe just a little bit more flour to be on the safe side. Now, I think every good chef or baker understands something about adjusting the recipe. adjustment. I'm putting in about what is that, a third or close to a half a cup of flour. So I'm going to be using about one cup and a half of flour for this recipe. Look, I'm stirring it in. I want it to be a little drier. Because if it's too wet when it goes in the oven, it won't have the consistency that I'm looking for. And I want to correct that right now. It looks like it's going to have to be in the oven for about 40 minutes. Quote me if I'm wrong. But it looks like it's going to need to cook for a while. After all, I did use fresh carrot pulp for this. So a little bit juicy. Of course the juice is right here so I don't see how it can be that juicy but this turned out to be a lot thinner than I expected. Perhaps it's because I'm using tapioca flour instead of regular flour which is actually used as a thickener and this I don't really do that with this but and now the cranberries. Let's see how it turns out. And then that handful of cranberries. And walnuts. Walnuts are optional. I just happen to have walnuts lying around that we just don't eat enough of, and I'd like to do something about that. What I have going on over here is pretty good. Mixing those walnuts. This may take a while to bake. I think. I'm saying that this is going to take at least 45 minutes, but I would check it after 30 minutes just to see how it's going. But when you're using tapioca flour, I feel like this is going to take longer. Could even take an hour. So we'll see. Looks real good. Now, 
for the finale. We'll be pouring it into this container, just like this. Stepping up a notch, if you were ever wondering if you're getting enough vegetables in your diet. <laughs> this is one way to get your vegetables in your diet. That's for sure. Old school carrot cake, carrot squares recipes. Of course, no one talks about carrot squares for some reason. Let's find out why. Is it because I'm just really good at finding things that are uncommon? Or is it because it tastes bad? I think it's because I'm onto something over here. But we'll see. It's got a real liquidy texture to it. And that is going to take a very long time to cook in the oven. I'm going to say this is going to take at least an hour. Uh, recipes online with uh, less eggs and less oil call for um, less time. But with this method, I'm just going to see if it works. It's not like I put in that much oil after all. and then check on it. If this turns out good, I'll let you know. If not, oh well, don't use tapioca flour. Yo, I did all this, YouTube, just so I can drink carrot juice. Without having to waste the carrot pulp. And by the way, these carrots, not bitter. Very good quality carrots. I love it. Really, really good carrot juice. <sighs> All right. Let's see how it came out in 50 minutes. That consistency feels good, but not done. But I like that it feels good. Hmm. I want to say put this in for an additional 10 minutes and I'm going to come back and see how it's doing. Alright, so it's been about an hour. Yes, I extended it past 50 minutes, which was originally where I put the timer at. And that's because normally for these brownies, it only takes 30 minutes to cook, but because these are going to be a little thicker, cooking a little longer. I think an hour and a half is about how long I want this to cook. But I could take it out now. It has a chewy taste. I think if it cooked a little bit longer... At least 20 minutes it would have a different consistency that would be uh, able to replicate the chewiness of a of a cookie brownie and that's kind of what I want Ooh. let's try this so it's definitely a little gooey mm, that's perfect it's done. I was correct. It takes about 80 minutes exactly. And now there's a nice chewiness to it that I like. Let's move this over. Here. Oh, look at that golden brown, crispy flavor. Tapioca flour. Carrot. Uh, I want to say, <laughs> it, it's honestly a phenomenal flavor, 
and I love it. I think that the brown sugar was a, no a really good touch, and it gives it that brown color on the inside instead of that um, lighter um, carrot cake color. The walnuts are a good touch, and pecans. Um, and then there's also some cranberries in this. It turned out really well, actually. There we go. I was able to scrape it. No big deal. Look at that. And tell me that doesn't look good. Remember, these are organic grade A carrots. Three cups of carrots for this recipe. So what you're looking at is mostly carrot. And the outside being cooked would give it that cake classification as you can see it's moist because of the carrots but that does not mean it's not cooked Th these are carrots <laughs> carrots with molasses just gonna try a piece Might work I may actually want to use a knife just so that we can all see it cut beautifully. Okay. All right, I'm going to try this. The center has like a gel base to it with this recipe and it doesn't taste bad. It has a crunchy outside. And a jelly-like inside. And it might be because of the tapioca, but it tastes like a jelly, like a gel. And I wanted to want it any harder than this. So this is actually the result based on uh, what I put into the, uh, um, the batter. I want to say... not too bad but I think if I want to make it more bread like see I tried to make this kind of like chewy right intentionally so I only put about a cup and a half of flour but if I had put in a full two cups of flour it would have turned into more of a cake but this I mean does this pass as a brownie though doesn't taste like a brownie that I've ever tried, but it tastes good. Hmm. Good morning, everyone. So, it is morning now. It's 9 a.m. in the morning, and I have the carrot brownie here. Now, I'm going with carrot brownie because, take a look at that texture. See, it didn't stay at the texture of a square. It hardened up just enough to where it replicates a texture of a fudge brownie. It's moist, but certainly cooked. And it has it doesn't have chocolate on it, obviously but it doesn't need it with those nuts. The nuts give it that bold carrot flavor. 
Also, the cranberries are a good touch. It's sweet. It's not too bready. I think if I added more flour to this, it would taste too much like cake. So these are definitely like a brownie. It has a chewiness to it. It's not gooey or liquid on the inside. It's not a pie. Although, this recipe certainly takes longer to cook and as a result it also takes longer to cool I don't think that you would have been able to recognize this as a brownie had uh, I not let this cool for at least two hours you would not have this tasting like a brownie at all. In fact, you could probably refrigerate it overnight for at least eight hours before eating it, in my opinion, because that will just make it a little more firm. I actually think I like the texture more the, the next day, so you could probably put this in the fridge to cool, but as you can see, it's not burnt at all. Look at the edge right there. It's like a golden brown edge to it. It's not burnt. It's like perfectly well done after 80 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit.